Hey guys, this is Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina. Welcome back to the channel. I have got a juicy video for you. This evening, I told you in the podcast that we would be releasing it. The podcast was out a little bit later than we wanted to. Uh, the Layout to See and Lookout podcast. A uh, new episode just dropped a couple of hours ago. You can go and watch that on my YouTube. Hope you enjoy it. Um, really quick here. Uh, not going to do a super long video, but I just wanted, if you can't tell by the title, which is probably the reason why a lot of you clicked on it, um, I had a run-in with the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, those Jim Dandy Christians from over there. Um, the, if you don't know, the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, it's uh, three uh, three guys, J.C. Groves, Nathan Kravit, or Kravit, however the heck you say his last name, and Brian Edwards. And so these guys have a podcast that they do where they talk about growing up in the independent fundamental Baptist churches and why they disagree with it. Now they're recovering and, you know, da 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 um, You know, there's a few things that I agree with these guys about. I think that the amount of sexual scandals and the embezzlement and some of the weird, you know, authoritarian, you know, power trips some of these guys go on, I, I agree with them on some of their stuff. I actually did a video a couple of months ago <clears throat> where I came out and said that I no longer call myself a fundamentalist. In fact, that's on YouTube. We'll put a card of it right here. You can see it on the top of the screen. Um, so there are there are some things, some things, few things that I would sympathize with these guys about. Uh, I've had some run-in with some of the brethren in the IFB. But I'm still Independent Baptist. I'm still King James only. I'm still, you know, soul winning. I believe in dress standards, the whole nine hours, you know, da-da-da-da. I, I still subscribe to all that. But here's the story, though, to get into kind of the nitty-gritty of it. Um, I was invited to come on the fundamentalist or the recovering fundamentalist podcast and so we did, we waited a couple of weeks because we wanted to release this video today because this was supposed to be the day that I was going to be recording with them and uh, let me go back and kind of tell you the the whole story here I was approached uh, you know via social media from uh, an individual that said hey um, are you going to accept the invitation to be on the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast? And I said, I've not received any invitation. I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. And uh, she said, well, it was on some kind of Twitter thread or something like that. And so I go on the Twitter thread and uh, I, I comment back to whoever it was. I can't even remember. I didn't even bother searching for um, for it on Twitter because it was it was so long ago, but I said, hey, you know, I just I just saw this. I don't really check my Twitter notifications and my Twitter account for whatever reason. I also don't get notifications, all the notifications. I have people tag me and stuff, and sometimes I won't even see it. And I don't really do much on Twitter anyway. But I responded, you know, hey, contact me on Facebook Messenger, and and we'll we'll get something figured out. Immediately, as soon as she told me that, I went there and, and responded to the guy and, you know, got it straightened out. And so he messages me on uh, July the 23rd around, let's see what time it was. I got all this stuff. We're going to show, we're going to show screenshots of all this stuff, okay? Uh, July 23rd at 229. Um, I respond July 23rd, same day at 510. And I said, no, I'll be in revival. You can see the screenshot here now. I respond to him. We get a date of, of, of August the 28th. And um, and then I respond, you know, or he responds that uh, uh, he'll send an email and all that kind of stuff, you know, about some of the talking points or whatever. I send him my email address, and that's the last I hear from him. I never get, another, I never get an email. I never get a notification. I mean, they don't try to reach out to me, nothing. So uh, they announced me as one of the guests on their Twitter feed. And, you know, a lot of people responded. And a lot of people, you know, said, ask him about this, that, or the other. Well, then I get a, another message weeks later. This probably maybe even, no, it was just weeks, it was weeks later. Um, about saying, hey, did you, why did you get canceled off the Recovering Fundamentals podcast? And I was just as much in the dark about it as when they initially invited me. I said, I didn't know that I was canceled off the Fundamentals podcast, Recovering Fundamentals podcast. And they said, yeah. So I go and watch the video. 
and um, and the video is J.C. Groves on there, and he's announcing you know whatever stuff about the about the podcast. And in that, he says, we were going to have Andrew Sluter on, but, you know, some of the stuff, you know, talked about Jesus burning in hell and, you know, putting the rapture in 2033. We're just not going to give him a platform to, you know, to spread that kind of, you know, junk or nonsense, whatever he said. Well, first of all, number one, I don't need their platform. Uh, And number two, um, Jesus burning in hell is just as Bible as plain as the nose on your face. And I never said the rapture will happen in 2033. You can go back and watch that video. Never said that could happen there's evidence i believe it may happen never said it's going to though uh so these guys twist and lie and so anyway i get on the video i get on the video and i comment now i do not have a screenshot of the comment because i did not think that they were going to do what they did next or whoever's probably jc groves um i comment and say when were you guys going to let me know about about camp being canceled you know, kept me in the dark, whatever. I can't even remember exactly what I said. The comment got deleted. I commented that, and J.C. Groves responds back, we're going to let you know the same way it took you four months to respond back to our invitation. So I commented back and said, hey, man, when you messaged me on Facebook, I responded the same day, and I put the screenshot. Well, guess what? That got deleted. So then I recomment again. We do have a screenshot of this. I commented again on the fundamentalist recovering fundamentalist podcast, uh, c- commented again, and then um, I-, I asked them. I, s- I said this, and in- this you can see it on the screenshot now. Comments deleted, showing that I responded to a message after falsely being accused of taking four months to reply. Well, so then I was no longer able to comment on the video. Then J.C. Groves blocked me on Facebook. You can see those. Screenshots now, where J.C. Groves blocked me. So then a couple of days, or I can't even remember exactly how long went by. It wasn't a terrible amount of time. Then I go to his Twitter. I'll tell you exactly when. It was August 5th. August 5th, he puts a post on there about Jesus taking a nap or something, whatever. And I say, you can see the screenshot now, hey, why did you block me on Facebook after I called you out for lying about me taking four months to accept your offer to come on the podcast, then cancel me without even notifying me. Sounds like you've kept some of your IFB ways after all. And I post the screenshots. Um, so then the, the response to that was he blocked me on his Twitter and he blocked me. The Recovering Fundamentalist Twitter also blocked me. So... Um, they well, and, and you know they, they said the Jesus burning hell thing and the rapture in 2033 and they said we've got you know we did a long interview with Phil Kidd and they said we're just going to break up the Phil Kidd interview into two different podcasts and you know now them and Phil Kidd have this like extremely fake WWE skit going on where oh he's calling him a bunch of sissy I mean it was just anyway it's it's humorous I didn't watch the podcast but I've seen a few of the videos that he's posted about the podcast and different posts and stuff like that. Uh, you know they have like, they've had guys like Nathan Rager, if I'm saying his last thing, it's Rager or Rager, whatever, on there that bastion of intellect. And so, listen, I'm not mad, I'm not upset. I think it's humorous though, and extremely ironic that these guys will invite these preachers to come on the podcast, and then they'll they'll ask questions on Twitter and all this kind of stuff, badgering these independent Baptist preachers. And then when these independent Baptist preachers block them, they will post on their Twitter accounts and on the Recovering Fundamentals Twitter account, they will post saying, oh, I guess they couldn't handle the questions, or I guess they don't want to talk, or whatever, and post the screenshot of them, uh, of them being blocked by these preachers and, and ridicule and mock them. Well, guys, let me ask you a question. Why did you block me? Could you not handle the, the the questions I was asking? Why didn't you have me on the podcast? Could you not handle the things that were going to be said? Too much Bible for you guys? I don't know. I'll let the, the court of public opinion be the judge. But I think it's very interesting that exactly what you accuse the IFB guys of doing, you yourselves have done in this situation. So folks, this has been my experience with the fundamental Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. In my opinion, they're just as lying and as cheating, conniving, and sneaky as any of the IFB preachers they accuse. They're a bunch of sissies and whiny babies. 
I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. And that, and that is my humble opinion of what it, of what they are. And that is what happened. And that is why I'm not going to be able, so maybe you ought to ask them, why, what's, why didn't you have Sluter? Why, why couldn't you, listen, they got Nathan Rager on there with his crazy self talking about all this craziness. They gave him a platform. I mean, that dude says some crazy stuff. They, I mean, they, they wanted to give him a, a platform. That is okay to give him a platform. But I mentioned, you know, Jesus burning in hell and evidence the rapture may happen in 23. That's just too much. We can't have Sluter on here. Yeah, yeah. Go sell that to somebody else, man, because I am not buying it. Anyway, folks, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. God bless you is my prayer.